Hello, and welcome to the first ever video from Portbelly Films. We're going to be focusing today on developing C41 film at home, and then towards the end of the video, I'll tell you a little bit about my plans for this channel, which will focus mostly on film, but on photography in general. Enjoy the video! So the kit we're going to go through using today is the Zinistil CS41 simplified kit. I started with this product here, which is the powdered kit, uh, partly because it's a little bit easier to get it shipped, and secondly because the liquid version of it uh, is about as rare as rocking horse shit here in the UK, and also significantly more expensive than the $22 advertised on screen, so lucky you if you're US based. comes in three packets, uh, you've got the developer, you've then got the two parts that make up the Blix, but we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. It's dead easy, it comes with all the instructions you need, and you know, there's an initial bit of fear with doing chemistry at home, but really wasn't all that bad. It just needs a little bit of patience and a little bit of calm to it. Looking at the three items that come within the kit itself in a little bit more detail, the first item on the left of the screen is your colour developer. You mix that powder in with a thousand millilitres of warm water in order to make your developing solution. It does sound the instructions to swirl the water when you're mixing the powder in, uh, which I'm sure does help with the dissolving process. It does, however, make it significantly more likely you'll slosh it all over yourself, uh, so I did not bother doing that for the Blix solutions. The two other powders, part A and part B, both go in the same 1000 milliliters of warm water uh, in order to make the Blix solution, which is a bleach fix. I would say putting part A into the Blix solution was the only bit where I thought, holy shit, this might actually kill me, as putting that powdered bleach into hot water does create a fairly awful smell. But as long as you just sort of be aware that might happen, there's no need to panic too much. Talking you now through what you'll need in order to actually do the developing. The first thing is the C41 developer uh, that we've just created, which is this lovely orange colour. Next you'll be needing the Blix, which is made up from the remaining two packages in the kit. Uh, when it all comes together, it's a very, very, very sort of dark black browny colour. Now this next chemical is optional, but I like to use a little bit of Rinseid, uh, which is essentially just something that stops streaks developing on your negatives when they dry. Uh, not essential, but it is very, very helpful and saves time when scanning. The next two things you're going to need are a Patterson tank, so you can do your developing. If you're not using that, you could use something like a lab box, and I believe there are other manufacturers that make tanks as well. If you are using the Patterson tank or any other, you'll also need a changing bag, so you can get your film in there in the dark without ruining it all. The next thing that I would very, very highly recommend is getting some gloves. I did do this a few times without gloves, and I would not recommend it, so definitely get some uh, these ones are a bit tight on me because I've got big fat sausage hands, but you might be alright if you've got normal hands. And the final two things you'll need are a thermometer to check the temperatures, and a pair of scissors to cut the film, and also to uh, snip your film off the roll at the end. So, number one first thing once it's in the bag is, on the reels, identify these little locking nugs, because they stop the film sliding out. Try not to touch the film as much as I'm doing here. Clearly just for demonstration, but you know, you'll you'll just cover it in fingerprints and then crank it on. Personally I don't find 120 film necessarily any more difficult than 35mm, though some people do because it's a little bit bendy, but it shouldn't be too difficult a process. Uh, next you're going to need to assemble it in the dark, so this is a demonstration really of just how the tank goes together. Put the central column in and then the reel. The central column is important because it's what makes it light tight. Without that, uh, even if you crank this top on like this, Oh, hear the click, it won't be light tight. So yeah, you're just going to have to do it in the dark is the only challenge. Uh, so this is me setting up the dark room bag, uh, popping in the all, all the various bits and pieces. I like to keep the film near the near the armholes so I can get to it easily. Uh, the scissors, as you can see here, uh, I've pointed downwards to give a maximum chance of stabbing myself in the hand when I stick my hands in. So maybe don't do that. Once it's all sealed up, you should have got a double zip if you're using the kind of standard changing bag. You want to pop your arms in and make sure there's a good seal. I'll save you watching me fumble about in the dark for a long time and we'll get on to what we need in the bathroom. Uh, so you'll need a thermometer. I use a fairly basic food thermometer, some rubber gloves uh, in case you get any nasties on your hands. The Devit app, I'll talk about later. Chemicals and your loaded up tank. So I start by filling up a little container with hot water and placing the chemicals in it so get the water as hot as it'll go in the tub there. I am going to pick up a sous vide machine which I think will make this a bit easier. Rinse aid doesn't need to be in a particular temperature so that can go to the side. The 
patient bit really here is waiting for everything to come up to temperature, which, as I say, with other solutions like a sous vide, probably a little bit easier. Uh, what I'll do with the thermometer is kind of leave it in the developer. It's the first chemical we'll use, so it's normally the one that I'll leave the thermometer in initially. I'll put it in, and then I try to kind of prop it against the side, because I've had a few incidents where I've dropped a thermometer in it, and uh, they are not as waterproof as the packaging claims. So, yeah, it's just a waiting game, really. And whilst we wait, we will give the tank a pre-soak in warm water to make sure the temperature in there is nice as well. Now, what I'm showing you here is a little screen capture from the Devit app, which is an amazing app you can use to set up your development times. So you set them all up, put in all of your times that you need, uh, and when you click Devit, it will just take you through those automatically, shows little timers at each stage, and uh, sets you off alarms when you need to agitate. So I'd recommend that App Store or uh, Google Play Store. Now it's finished the pre-soak, I'm going to empty it out into the bath, and the one thing you'll notice is that it is so green. First time I did this, I thought, Jesus, is Shrek taking a shit inside my developing tank? Nope, it is just that green. Coming to the first stage in the actual developing, it's time to put the developer in. So tip it in, and I try and do this as quickly as possible, and then get the lid on as quickly as possible, so I can start the agitation. I use these wide neck 1000 milliliter bottles because I'm too lazy to separate out and label a load of funnels. You'll see later on I can put that developer back in there without needing a funnel. Once you've got your developer in, it's just a case of putting the lid on and starting the agitation process. So this is going to be 3 minutes of agitation every 30 seconds, uh, which is what I programmed into the dev app. Times at the developing stage will vary depending on how many rolls you develop with a Cinestill kit. Instructions are all up on their website. So now I'm just doing the final agitation as we've got towards the end of the three minutes. So this is the last agitation I've been told to do by the dev app. Then it is a case of popping the lid off and very carefully tipping the developer back in. And this is where those wide neck bottles are really helpful. Obviously, if you're a bit more organized than me, you could have a little funnel that's labeled for each one, but this works for me. Quickly as possible, we then want to get the blicks in. We want to try to do it as fast as we can so that nothing cools down too much. The blicks temperature is less important. It's not quite as sensitive as the developer is, but it's still good to have it at a consistent temperature. Once you've done that, get the lid on and start agitating it. This process is going to be eight minutes with an agitation every 30 seconds. Now this is something that nobody ever told me, but if you are quite observant, you might notice the lid on that tank is bulging slightly. That's because the hot blicks actually expands quite quickly uh, and releases quite a bit of gas. So what I do every now and again is just pop the lid to let the gas out and that avoids it exploding all over you, which I can tell you from experience is no pleasant. So now we've done the final agitation on the Blix solution, we need to take the lid off the tank and empty it in. Again, the wide neck bottles here are a massive advantage. I tend to do this one a little bit more quickly, just because the Blix stuff uh, is a little bit more kind of noxious, I think, than the developing liquid. But still, it's not too bad, you just have to tip it in all a little bit carefully. Once you've got the last of the blicks out, it's time for the rinse, so I'll rinse that for three minutes in cold water just to make sure there's no residual chemicals on your negatives. Whilst I'm doing that, I'll then you can see me here think about putting the lid on the developer. What I'm doing is I'm squeezing all of the air out and then capping it off, which makes sure that there's as little air as possible in the uh, developer, meaning that it should last a little bit longer. I'll then get the rinse aid out because I'm going to need that for the next step. You can then see me start to think about capping the blicks. Uh, I even squeeze all of the air out of it. And then I realize that's probably not a good idea. As I said, blicks expands a little bit more and I wanted to avoid blowing the cap off and covering the entire bathroom and myself in blick solution. So I give that one a wee while to cool down. Once the rinse has been going for three minutes, I empty all the water out. 
and I start to dismantle the tank so that I can let it sit in the rinseed. So you can take the top off now and then it's time to put the rinseed in. Once I put that in, I tend to leave it for a minute, a minute and a half before taking the film out and making sure I get all the rinseed off. As I said earlier, the rinseed isn't essential, but it is really helpful. It stops streaks as your film's drying, which makes it a lot easier to scan later if you're going to scan yourself. Generally, I think if people are going to develop at home, most people would take the next step at home and scan it as well, so it just saves you a little bit of time in the long run. Once a rinse aid has been in there for a minute, minute and a half, I'll then very, very, very carefully tip it out, try and make sure I get all the bubbles out as well and don't leave too many on the negative. At this stage, you kind of hold your breath and think, God, has this actually worked? And you can see that it has. If you take it out, we can now have a look at the results from that roll. Uh, I'm, a, again, a little bit cack-handed here. Probably don't touch it as much as I am, but I'm trying to just make sure you get a nice view uh, for the video. So yeah, you can see all your images appear. There's there's very little more satisfying, to be honest. Then I hang them up to dry. So I've cut them into uh, two strips, and I'll cut them later to scan them. So there you go, hopefully that makes you feel a little bit more confident about developing C41 film at home and realizing it's really not that bad. Join us next week, our next video is gonna be a little retrospective. I'm gonna go through some images that I took in January and February this year, back when we were still allowed to travel, and hopefully that'll give people a bit of a flavor of the kind of photos that I like to take. Until then though, peace out.